Uh, no Charlie oh. in this episode? No, she's No, we just off. want Charlie to bark and chase people <laughs> around the office. I love uh, her. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get ready. Actually, she did lick your straw. What? <laughs> <laughs> no way. Jay witnessed it, and I looked over, and I was like... And then I, I have just, and I put that in my mouth. I know. They say I'm a dog's sorry. mouth is one of the <laughs> one of the cleanest mouths in the world. Maybe so. not Charlie's, but she did lick your straws. So, uh, sorry. oh well. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't wash my shaker cups. I'm sure there's a lot worse. That's why I think yeah. I stay healthy. So much bacteria in that thing. <laughs> and Immunity. I just keep putting stuff in it and shaking it and drinking it. This is. This is a special moment. We get you on the on the podcast today, but also not because we had. I pulled you aside, like I think a week ago, maybe maybe not that long ago, a couple of days, where I was like, "Hey, you know, you really, you when we bring someone up at two o'clock and we talk and we they do an acting thing or they do something, we always I always measure growth. You might be watching it, you guys as like, oh, what movie are they doing or what are they doing." And I'm always, I'm sometimes not even listening to that. I'm looking for pure growth. Yeah. And you have grown, and it seems silly because we're a mortgage company, but you have grown in the like public speaking presentation arena here so well that I'm so super proud of your growth because you started freezing, crying, not being able to do it waiting for me to like give you a free pass and I'm like oh that's not how that works <laughs> yeah. here you're gonna do it yeah. and to knocking it out of the park and the last one we did was the stories and you're reading your your son's favorite story and you killed that yeah. thank you right? so, I actually was encouraged to go home and watch Brave that Saturday right? in my bed um because of that reading <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah <laughs> Truth so, but I did. Um, and I think with you too, Megan, like what I, all of us have learned about you specifically is once you get it, you really get it. So it takes time. And like when you came in, you, you're such a bright person and like being the personal trainer that you are and really helping people every single day. We knew that it would just be like one day that it just clicks for you. And you're like, you know what? I'm confident in this. And then you can basically conquer anything. And you've come so far with all of that. And mind you, you have like a lot of things to juggle. So to do a two yes. o'clock presentation, sometimes <laughs> I'm like, is she crazy? Like the things she had to deal with this weekend and she's worried about a two o'clock presentation, <laughs> but you've come a long way and I'm super proud of you. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you guys. So what is it in you? What it makes you be the conqueror that you are? My boy. All right, yeah. yeah my boy is a huge thing of it. But also like my life, like I feel like growing up, I'm gonna start getting emotional because that's how I am. Yeah, that's all right. But my life, people have dictated how my life should be. I'm now in control of how it's gonna be. So, you are, right? Like that's yeah. one thing that we talk about and you and I talk about often is that no, you're in control now and yeah. it's been a learning curve for you to have to oh, be yeah. in to learn that you are in control right yeah. not listening to outside forces not letting things get you off track not letting your history and we talked before your past trauma whatever's yeah. brought you to this little thing today which we'll cover yeah right you mm -hmm. don't let that run you no. anymore that's that's empowering yeah right that's been a a big a big change even here a shift mm. for you here so i can't imagine what it's been like in your personal life yeah so today we're talking to megan <laughs> megan yes. came to us also during covid right because we did uh, the latter well yeah actually oh, yeah, yeah in it, july of was no it it'll two be two years two years october two years in october so yeah you were recommended mm -hmm. we did an interview you loved me. You were really right good. I'm pretty sure she <laughs> so only had you. one interview. No, no, I had the both. Who'd you meet with? I met with Tiana, Jacob, and Jasmine. Okay, yeah, I must have did. been away. Oh, you must have been away. Yeah, because yeah, I met her the first day. She started here. You're always on them. Yeah. I know. Weird. Weird. 
Um, <laughs> She's the longest one that's lasted that I didn't interview. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, well, that's also Guess so. a feather well, it's in your proverbial cap. a good thing we're friends over here, right? This is great. <laughs> but, and I liked, I liked your interview process because you're a personal trainer. And I'm a yes. former personal trainer, and I know what it's like to connect to clients. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that helped me build my client base was you learn a lot as a mm -hmm. personal trainer about people. Ton. All right, what's some of the lessons that you took? You still do it, I think, on part time, or do you? Um, sometimes I'll like write people programs. Uh, right now, I'm actually just doing dry training with my own son. Okay. So because he plays rep hockey, I've created a little program for him to do dry training in the morning because okay, cool. he wants to be in the NHL one day. All right, let's so put I'm that taking out there. care of him. Let's put that out for Noah. <laughs> Manifesting this for my little yeah, Noah. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, but essentially, like what I learned from clients is people want things constantly but a lot of them either don't have the tools they don't have the drive they don't have the knowledge or the education to right. actually get them to where they want to be right, right, right. Um, so it's just essentially supplying that for them you know when I supply the tools and the education and all that stuff it also brings them confidence because they're like oh I can I can do that yeah I didn't realize I could have done like you know, a set of, of 12 with that weight on it. I had no idea I was capable of that. Yeah. And then that just kind of opens this massive, beautiful door for them to be like, oh my God, I can do this. I can do better. I watch what's next. Right. Yeah. Like 100%. <laughs> so when I had clients in, I was in that industry, I used to say to them in the beginning, most people come to you, I just mm. need a program. Mm. Whatever you do, that doesn't work. I can give you a hammer. You're not going to build a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish it was that easy, but I would say to them all the time, I will set you up so that you never need me again. Mm -hmm. I yeah. fail as a personal trainer, which is what we feel here. We fail as an agent mm -hmm. if you continually need me exactly. with no like, hey, I want to do a fitness show. Hey, I want to, mm -hmm. you know, I want to buy an investment property. They're so, I instantly wanted to hire you because I know just same with Marshall is in the fitness. They're very intertwined because mm -hmm. when you can take somebody and coach them through a weight loss journey, mm -hmm. through a fitness goal, through a health goal. When you can get that information on your phone, on your fitness app, you can get it online. You can buy something from LinkedIn or from a link tree on Instagram, following a fitness influencer. So much information out there, just like there is in the financial world, that you mess it up, mm -hmm. yeah. that you need a guide. And when I was interviewing you, I was like, well, oh, I don't care about the rest of her history. Our current is personal trainer, and I know that uh, server working in the restaurant industry, working in retail, those skills translate so well mm -hmm. into what we do every day mm -hmm. because you have to be a good listener, yeah. you have to be a great coach, and I think you're, those two are your big strengths. Thank you. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was is there was there forget about the knowledge part of it because I think that was maybe your biggest, and you can answer this question. I shouldn't do it for you. I think that was your biggest hurdle when you came and switched mm, over, but huge. it certainly wasn't having conversations with people. No. Yeah. No. My, like, no, I mean, I'm good at talking to people. I am good at getting people to open up. I'm good at connecting with people yeah. because I've been through so much in my life that I never, ever want anybody to feel like they're a burden on me. So I'm like, yeah, what, tell me, yeah. what do you need? What can I help you with? How can I make you successful so that Looking back, you can be like, Megan, help me with that. And now I'm in such a better place in my life to the point that if they ever reach out to me again, like I said earlier, it's to hopefully we never have to go through this again. Even, you know, with my clients currently, like as a mortgage agent, the only time they reach out to me is to send me pictures of, hey, wish you were here, like enjoying this with us. Too bad. Like, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> they just, and I'm like, I can't, but I really appreciate that yeah. because it yeah. just shows the connection that, you know, I've had with the clients and that they don't need me. And they're like, oh my God, my, my score is so much higher. Or, you know, clients at the gym where they're like, oh my God, I, I have never looked this way or felt this way in my entire life. And it's so rewarding as and just a human being. So one of your greatest strengths that that translated over is your willingness to, without remuneration, mm -hmm. is invest in people. Mm -hmm. You're this. I used to make these comments to you in the beginning. Like you're, I'll never ever have to tell you how to talk to somebody or invest your time into people. I might have to say, 
45 minute, uh, two hour phone call is, you might have got the information already, <laughs> but you build such strong, mm -hmm. real, like when you do get a review, it's usually full of like, you're the, she's the best. <laughs> she did so, she did that. Like, because you just, where did that come from? Where do you have that positivity? You inject positivity so much to people and you were willing to like listen and learn everything about a client. Where does that come from? Well, I honestly think that just comes from, you know, me growing up and the way that I did grow up. Right. There was so much negativity around me. There was so many people being like, this isn't possible for you. You're not going to do this. Even when it came to like basketball, for instance, I grew up playing basketball. Okay. Um, and because I'm so tall, they're like, oh, you're playing forward. And I'm like, but I want to, I want to be a guard. <laughs> I want to shoot three pointers because that's the cool thing to do. Yeah, yeah. My coach, nope, you're going to, you're going to play post. And I'm like, I'm going to play guard. And he's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, you watch me. Yeah, yeah. I became the best three point shooter in Simcoe County. No way. After he told me that you're not playing guard. So whenever somebody <laughs> tells me, fuck you, Megan, no, you're not, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, yeah, fucking watch me. <laughs> no, no way. I will show you. I didn't know that about yeah, you. Yeah, and then yeah. my rookie year, I was the first rookie in, in university to be in the All-Star game and three-point competition there. So it's pretty... Uh, yeah, out. It's an All-Star. You have to drop... <laughs> <laughs> you have to take Danny and Ronnie out there. Yeah, I was Ian like, why isn't Megan involved in these competitions? Maybe they already knew she won the competition, yeah. so right. they kicked her out. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to get like, involved. we don't want to get shown yeah. up. Yeah. We know she's capable. They don't, yeah. don't want to get. They don't want to get <laughs> shocked that they don't. Yeah, win. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm often called a ringer when I go places because people don't expect me to be good at basketball. No way. Um, yeah, actually, a girlfriend of mine went to LA Fitness a few years ago, and we were playing, and all these guys wanted to play, and we're like, oh, can we play? They're like, no. We're like, oh, okay, are you sure? They're like, well, if you can find a team, I'm like, no problem. No worries. <laughs> I'll I find a team. I'll find a team. We went and found three random people in the gym. We were undefeated <laughs> at LA. What school did you play for? I just played for Georgian and Barry. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Nice. Yeah. So. There you go. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, we were undefeated to the point where we're like, okay, we're done. We're going to go now. You guys can come up now. Well, if I had known during the interview <laughs> you were also a basketball star, we, were, we used to do runs back then. You would have been uh, yeah, involved in those too, right? Wednesday night runs. Yeah. I never went. I just coordinated them. <laughs> have fun. See you so tomorrow. I mentioned up the top that you got in with a, a referral, mm -hmm. but when you, what made you choose to change careers or what, why did you want to become an agent or what were you what was someone must have said to you like this is a good place or you mm -hmm. should try this or this is working for me but what made you think yeah maybe maybe I will do it so actually the the person who referred me uh she actually reached out to me for a personal training oh okay so she had reached out to me and was like hey I kind of want to get back to the gym like would you write me a program like could we do this and I'm like yeah no problem so I was talking to her and she's like why don't you just do what I do and I'm like well what do you do <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and she's like, well, you know, I'm a mortgage agent and I do all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, I can't do what you do. How, like, how do I do that? And she's like, well, this is what you need to do. She's like, my boss, Adam's amazing. Let me, you know, get in contact with him and kind of see if, you know, how that door would open. I'm like, oh, all right. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And then uh, I kind of looked into it and I was like, oh, wow. I could really change my life and my son's life. And it was the one thing in my life that I hadn't solidified as to being so confident and comfortable in giving my son and myself the life that we've always desired and that I've always dreamed for myself. And I was like, this is my opportunity. So met with you. You loved me, obviously. <laughs> so much that I got the job without Ali here. This and now <laughs> Ali and I are actually pals here. Yeah. So it's nice that like, even though I didn't get to meet her initially, we've actually built a good rapport in the office yeah. and it's genuinely changed my entire trajectory for how I saw my life going. And it just solidified that one missing piece that I could finally be in control of the money that I bring in so that I can establish my life. Like I don't have yeah. a family that I can fall back on. Right. I don't have anything like that. You have you and Noah. I have me and Noah. Core. And Sugar and Jordan. And Sugar and Jordan <laughs> and Jeffrey, which is my gecko and my dog and my cat. Right, right. Like you're, you're, this is one of the things that I like about 
the industry, mm. like and what attracts people to the industry is that, you know, you can, you can make a way. Mm. I mean, when you don't see a way with the right support and the right direction, and still do something good, helping mm. people f- solving problems, but you can build a really solid life for for yourself. Yeah, and you did it, or you're. We're not done. Right? <laughs> She's it's, doing it. You're doing it, and that's that's what. Yeah. That that's what is uh, inspiring, and this is why this this episode is a lot different because while we don't we focus on we don't focus on mortgages and we focus on on you, but you've made so many big leaps just mm. this year, mm-hmm. even facing wild, out of the blue. <laughs> circumstances challenge that would yeah. stop you from yeah. and so would you touch on because i think this this is just part of your amazing story <laughs> right tell us so a month ago yesterday i'm here every day crushing it just trying to do my best i as i mentioned i love my son so much so i took him to play golf yeah teach him how to play golf for the first time i'm much better mortgage agent than a golf teacher <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Let's just say the first ball he wanted to hit, he got so excited that didn't let mommy move out of the way and actually knocked me out cold and split my head open. (laughs) So wild. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I woke up on the ground and all I could before that, I didn't even realize like I got hit. Like I knew I got hit. And she was worried about Noah. I was worried about (laughs) Noah. Of course. Noah, it's okay. (laughs) Mommy's okay. He's like, but you're not. Yeah, he literally asked me, how could you care more about me than you when you're the ones bleeding? Oh my goodness. Because <laughs> I literally, I woke up and I, because it just, it literally felt like my bell had been rung. All I could hear was ding. And then my brain just vibrating. So I just grabbed my head and just saw black and dropped. Oh my God. And then when I woke up, I couldn't see because there was so much blood in my eyes because there was, I've never seen so much blood in my life. (laughs) And I was a nurse in a previous life of mine. So I woke up, I moved the blood and I just looked for no. And I was like, it's okay. Mommy's okay. I'm awake. No problem. Ambulance is coming. Deep breaths. No problem. Everything is going to be okay. I didn't cry. I didn't scream. I didn't even react. I was just worried about my son because I've been through so much trauma in my life right. that I've been constantly working towards breaking that generational trauma. Right. Yeah. And this specific instance would have done a lot to him. Yeah. Yeah. I know how much he if loves you. If you hadn't you. reacted the way you did. Yeah. Yeah. I like you and him are tight. He's, well, yeah. I think too, like even when you speak to clients, sometimes their stories are jarring. Yeah. So uh, like a reaction that would typically be warranted or like you're like, oh my goodness. And you're taken back. Sometimes could be like detrimental to a client relation. Mm. So you being able to say like, hey, listen, like I understand what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. I've been there. I, you bring that sense of like calmness to the situation, which is helpful. Like you mm. said, you don't want to create that trauma that maybe was created for you. And it's like, I wish so-and-so would have done something different because if they had just said something different, then maybe this set of events wouldn't have had such an impact on me. Mm-hmm. But it takes a lot for a person to really acknowledge that, understand it mm-hmm. and make those changes, which yeah. is huge. Mm-hmm. And it's something that you do through and through here mm-hmm. and all of our clients should be very grateful that they have someone in their corner like you. I appreciate that. Thank you so yeah. much. This is one of the, why I brought this up is you and I, when you finally got back to work and mm-hmm. it was a challenge and you pushed yourself a little too much, but you knew being the main income earner, being the, per, right? This, you and I had this conversation where you're like, this is how it is for our clients. Like one weekend mishap when you're the main income earner. So yeah. when you look at a credit bureau and you look at a situation, it's real easy to be judgmental and be like, oh, wow, what happened to you? And then you're like, oh, well, I was hitting the head with a golf club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. My son may be under 10, but he can, he's got a lot of power hitting <laughs> the head right here. Yeah. And I couldn't work for a month. Like, yeah. we're obviously, we love you. We're going to work with you. We're going to, yeah. but someplace, you know, if you're working where you have to be, uh, in a certain position at a certain time and you can't make that and you can't make that income. Now mm-hmm. it's gone. And very yeah. quickly, it doesn't take long for things to get bad. 
financially. No. No. And so I kept saying to you, like, the silver lining is there's this experience you're going <laughs> to learn from and the universe is, is showing you this is what you need to do. <laughs> Why did it need to ring your bell? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You're alive. I'm alive. <laughs> yeah. You and even the nurse was like, hey, yeah. listen, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. This would have been completely different. Yeah. But grateful that it wasn't. Right? Yeah. It was the best out of a worse situation. But again, like as a single mom being, you know, not only the, the you know, biggest income earner, I'm the only income earner in my right, house. Right. It's yeah. just us two. Yeah. So it's like. I have to do what I have to do, but I also had to make sure that I was doing it in a way where I wasn't going to take steps back while I was trying to move forward. Right, right. Yeah. I had to balance it all in a way. And, and considering everything I've been dealing with in the yeah, last yeah, couple yeah, of months, sure. I feel like I've handled it very well. I think so. I agree. I think so. Like to the point where I had to tell you to go home. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> you know, get home safely. But we're yeah. gonna your 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 role is still here. We'll yeah. work around it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it about this place that, or about what we do, that connects with you so deeply? Honestly, like everything about this place connects with me. From like, I don't want to get emotional, but from the clients, their stories. Yeah. How I can relate to them. Yeah. You know, my own struggles. I mean, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Having the flexibility to be a single mom, to get my son to hockey, pick him up from after school care, and still commuting an hour and being able to manage all of that and have my position without worrying, like, oh no, like I have to leave, you know, right. 10 minutes before five today. Like, you know, in a, in a regular job, people would be so stressed and may not, you know, be able to do that. Like for instance, yeah. I worked at the beer store for 13 years before I was a personal trainer and everything. And, uh, it was so strict to the point that I had to pick up my son on my lunch break, bring him to the babysitters and then get back to work. And I didn't even have time to eat because they wouldn't even let me snack wow. because I had to use my lunch break to pick up my son to bring him to the babysitter from after school. So going from that to like, you know, having to take him to the gym at four in the morning with me to train clients and, you know, let him sleep in the youth care room on the couch while I'm trying to train people so that I can, you know, take him to school and then go to another job kind of thing. Right. This place, the people here, like the staff, amazing. We try. Yeah. That's the whole part of the, the whole process of trying to find. No, I right, love the, it. The meet with me, meet with four people from the community. Yeah. Even when you get here, you still have to, it's not an instant fit in. Then you nope. try and find your way mm -hmm. and you try and build relationships. But I agree when I sum it up when people will say to me, like, oh, I go to work every day. You don't need to. It's been a decade. It's mm. you. Mm -hmm. It's all of you that, that I love working with. Yeah. I love things we accomplish together. And in turn, that is infectious because then it leaks down into the clients mm -hmm. and the clients feel that way. We do our best to make it feel that way. And I think that there is a, we do the lend a hand program. Yeah. We give away money. We did it during COVID. Mm -hmm. We didn't, we stuck to it no matter what, even if it was a lean year, we knew people needed the lend a hand program more than ever during yeah. that time. You're in the video at the end, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's such an emotional finish to that video where you're just like I just I just love this place I love it here I love what we do for people I love the process that we follow I love that we don't just give people a loan and then say bye it's like no like let's connect let's me see how I can genuinely help you like yeah an algorithm can shoot you out you know whatever you're qualified for right. but what is that ultimately going to do for benefiting you in the long term yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're going to have that, but okay, well, how are you going to get out of it? What's your plan? Do you know what you're doing next? Mm -hmm. Do you have to improve anything in the interim? Are you okay with how things are going? What do you want in the future? And I think all of these things, people don't really acknowledge or really think about until they come to us. Yeah. Yeah. 
because well, because rarely are they ever asked those questions exactly they're just kind of in autopilot like life exactly. happens and sometimes our clients are like i honestly haven't even been able to think about any of these things that could be impacting because mm -hmm. it's just one thing after another yeah. and after another. So it really allows us to create that vision board yeah. and create that perspective for clients and being able to have them slow down. Yeah. Say, walk me through what your goals are. And they, a lot of them will say, well, these were my goals until X, Y, and Z happened. But it's yeah. creating that, um, I guess, that path that they can get back on in order to accomplish those things and reassess the situation I guess, periodically to continue to be on that journey. With yes, them. absolutely. Um, I actually compared life. I used a really interesting analogy um, to my friend the other day where we were just talking about life. And, and I was like, you know what? Life relates a lot to like my job to the point like I relate life to a credit bureau. Mm -hmm. okay. Hang in here. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm here for All it. Right. <laughs> so everyone's got their FICO score. That can go down, that can go up. We all got things on there that we don't necessarily want, but they can be removed. They can be dealt with. Eventually, you know, even with a proposal or a bankruptcy, they're gonna be on there for a long time, but eventually that's no longer gonna prohibit you moving forward. I see where you're going. So there's, no matter where you are in life, there are always opportunities and ways to help you improve and get out of that situation. You're never stuck. Right. You just have to be dedicated enough to see the bigger picture for what it is that you want for yourself. And then just have that strategy is how the hell are you going to get there? Mm -hmm. And if you need some help, you need some support, you need some guidance, seek that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seek yeah. that out. Yeah. But you're not stuck. You know what I mean? Like people can constantly grow. People can constantly move forward. So that's how I was like, oh. Life's kind of like a credit bureau. Yeah. yeah. Well, our you credit know? bureau tells our clients stories exactly. and even down to missed payments. It's like, hey, what happened here? Yeah. It's like, oh, that was three years ago when I lost my job and so did my husband. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, like who would have thought that a credit bureau could tell me so much about someone? Yeah. But then again, it, it's life. It's life. I know you. And I ask everybody on this show for a client impact story. One. Oh, <laughs> it's good. Good. You're going to have to think of one that uh, really really emotionally really left an imprint on you i've had so many wonderful clients i know that's what i mean like when you lot. connect you connect <laughs> they don't disconnect so what is one that comes to mind where you solved a big problem um didn't look like it was going to happen one story wow that's tough um i'm probably gonna have to say I have a married couple who happen to be, I don't want to pick favorites or anything like that. Yeah, they sure. just happen to be one that I remember specifically. Now, lovely, lovely couple. Now they had, you know, they were both retired. He used to be an accountant. He kind of did some on the side like that, but uh, they had a ton of debt. And, you know, with COVID and, you know, everything kind of getting out of hand, they had, I think about $100,000 in credit card debt. They had their first mortgage intact and we're like, okay. They're like, I don't know what to do. Like my credit score is in the low 600s. Like, I don't know how to take care of this debt. Like we're on a fixed income. Like I, I can do some accounting. Like they were so overwhelmed. I was like, it's okay. It's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you're in good hands. Cause if, there, if I can do something for you, I'm gonna do it. Right. So let's work through this together. Let's figure it out. Okay, what happened? What do we need to do? So we went through all the debts, went through all the options, had them their DLO, we discussed everything. And I'm like, hey, this is the plan. They're like, all right. I lined everything up. And like, we talked all of the time because they were stressed, like to the point, they were calling me on the weekends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, it's okay. They're like, I can't believe you're taking my call right now. I know you're with your son. I'm like, my son's okay. He's with me right now. We're just, you know, we're playing outside. Are you okay? What question do you have? They just had like random questions and then even just those small bits of acts of kindness for answering their phone calls on a weekend or in an evening, it really helped alleviate a lot of their stress and alleviated a lot of their pressure with, you know, moving forward with the process right. and having everything come full circle. And 
they, they actually called me eight months later. They're like, our score is in the 800s. That's crazy. I'm like, wow, are you serious? They're like, yep. So th- not only did all their debts get paid off, they followed my plan to a T. Their ratios fit for a full refinance with their first and second. Nice. They got everything paid off. Their score is where they need to be. And now they're just enjoying so retirement. In- yes. Right. Because your life in a credit bureau, your past does not have to dictate your future. Exactly. Yeah. As long there we go. as you <laughs> get help to solve yeah. the problem. Exactly. Yeah. You're not done growing no. yet. I'm saying goodbye. We're not going to cry, right? But you're not done growing yet. We do, as a team, look at you a lot of times. We're like, man, how does she do all the things that she's juggling with and gets here, gets here. He, Noah comes in sometimes, right? You see the connection with you guys. You're still providing for him and you're still connecting with clients. You're still, you care. You give I so care a much care. So much to the point where I, I remember pulling you aside once saying, hey, if they don't like what you've had to say, I see how much it upsets you. You got to just let it go. Mm-hmm. You're, you're doing, you're sticking true to who you mm-hmm. are and what the processes and if they don't like it don't get mad (laughs) don't get upset just keep helping people and it'll pay off and it has paid off you have been for someone where i wouldn't think you were gonna quit but you were like oh i don't know you were worried you had all stats like odds against you yeah Yeah. literally i don't know like is she (laughs) gonna tough it out here like she can do it we believe in her and you just kept plugging along and doing it and we're not, like I said, we're not done, but you're just keep pushing forward and keep doing what you're doing is keep that same level of care mm-hmm. that you have for everybody in here. Mm-hmm. You leave notes for people I do, yeah. right? and keep that level of care for clients and your family and where you want to go and mm-hmm. you're going to be just fine. I appreciate right? that. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank today. you for joining us. Thanks for right. having me. It's you made lovely. it. You made it through. Thank yeah. you. you I know. It. I cried a lot, but it's fine. And honestly, actually, it was a lot less than you normally I, do. <laughs> that's because I didn't go on about Adam. If I go on about Adam, then I'm going to start bawling because yeah. he, again, I'm not going to start now. No, no crying. No crying. You did so good. Thank you're, you for joining You're the best. Us, Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.